So today I want to cover setting up a VLAN using Sophos XG version 18, a UniFi access point, and a QNAP managed switch. If you're interested in learning more on how to set up a VLAN, then stick around for the rest of this video. And if you haven't already done so, then please subscribe and click the notifications icon so you'll be notified of any new content. So regardless of which firewall you're using, VLANs are a pretty powerful and flexible way to provide isolation and security in your home and business network. In this video, I want to create a simple VLAN network that I'll be using for testing, and I want it to be isolated from my main network. To start with, we need to start with the firewall. Um, in my case, it's going to be Sophos uh, XG version 18. And the very first thing we need to do is to create an interface or a VLAN interface. If you haven't used VLANs before, um, the term can be a little bit misleading or intimidating, but a VLAN is nothing more than replicating a network card virtually. So it's basically breaking out a network card. So let's go ahead and build one up. So I'm going to log into the network um, in my Sophos web management interface. And the next thing I want to do is click on add interface and I'm going to click on add VLAN. Now I need to name this thing. So we'll call it test network. And we need to bond it to a particular port. It's always your LAN port, but which port it is is really dependent on the configuration that you have. A lot of firewalls just have a couple of interface cards, so you're just going to automatically bond it to whatever your port number is for your uh, LAN. In my case, I have actually a total of four ports in my firewall, um, and two of them are actually reserved for two physical networks. So I'm going to assign mine to port four. And again, this may be different on yours. Um, the zone's going to be land, of course, and we need to give it a, a land ID. And I picked a hundred. And the reason I picked a hundred is because I want to be creating a network that's a 192.168.100.x as my network or as my test network. So associating the VLAN number with the range of IP addresses in the network just helps me remember and associate the two. So we're going to leave this as a static IP and we're going to go ahead and give it a static IP of 192.168.100.1. So from here we don't really need anything else. All we've done is create the virtual network card. Hit save. So the next thing we need to do is the network card or um, having a network card with a static IP isn't going to do us much good unless we can serve up some DHCP with it. So we need to go to DHCP and we're going to need to create a new DHCP. So let's click on add and again we're going to give it a name and we're going to select the interface and the inter interface we're going to select is the one we just created which is called the test network and there it is. And here we're going to assign a range. And the reason I gave it the 100 to 254 range is because I'm trying to save some uh, IP space below 100 for static IPs. In Sophos, you manually assign IP addresses and it, um, you need to reserve some space for it. I'm not going to assign any right now. So this is probably all we're going to do here. Everything else looks good. So I'm going to click on save. And the next thing we want to do is, um, as best practices in Sophos, you want to name your stuff. So whether it's a computer or a, a subnet or network or a range of, com of devices, it's helpful to have a name to them. Um, it makes it easier to assign them in firewall rules and track down things. So let's go over to um, host and services and let's create a name for our new network. So I'm going to call it test network. It's going to be an IPv4. It's not going to be an IP address because I'm not assigning it to one device. I'm assigning it to an entire network. So I'm going to click on network and we're going to go ahead and give it a 192.168.100.0 uh, slash 24. That will give us the entire network. And that becomes our test network. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And the last thing we have to do 
in our firewall is to actually create a firewall rule. So let's go over to rules and policies. And what I'm going to do here is create a rule that allows the traffic to actually go outside. So let's click create and let's click on add firewall rule. And we're going to give it a name. Test network. Uh, descriptions optional. I'm going to position it at the top and I'm not going to put it in any kind of group. Uh, the grouping doesn't functionally do anything. It's mostly just how you organize your rules. And then optionally, you can decide if you want to log traffic or not. I don't really need it for now. So our source network is going to be the WAN. I mean the LAND. And our source network is going to be the one that we just created which will be this one down here. So let me remove any, put the test network. So that's our source. Um, leaving, we're leaving the scheduling to go on all the time. And our destination zone, of course, is gonna be the WAN. And we're gonna leave destination networks and services to any, because we're not controlling those at this point. The only thing we, else we need to do here is if you watched any of my previous Sophos videos, um, you'll understand a little bit about rules and or about web filtering, uh, application filtering, and IPS. Um, if you haven't seen any of my stuff, I've, I'm going to post a link to the most recent one I did, which actually uses um, version 18 to kind of go through some rules. So, uh, and I'll point to that in the description. So the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to assign the rule that I use for most of my networks which I've created. Um, and then IPS, I'm going to use a LAN to WAN. And I'm going to go over here to web filtering and I'm going to assign my default web filtering. And that's it. Now again, if you don't have any of these filtering rules created, it doesn't stop you from moving forward. You, just, you can always go back in and add them later. It's not a showstopper. Um, I just happen to have have them created and I use them across multiple networks so I can reuse those rules. I don't have to recreate them every time uh, and they work well. They've been gone through quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So just a quick recap is to prepare the firewall. And again, this may vary depending on the kind of firewall you're using. But in this particular case in Sophos, we had to create an, um, a VLAN interface. We had to create a DHCP server. We named our new network and we created a firewall rule to allow traffic to actually go out. Um, I did want to point out that since this is uh, version 18, there are separate NAT rules. The NAT rules won't need to be changed because the NAT rules are going to be using the generic one, which basically, unless you specify a linked rule, all of your firewall rules will use a default NAT rule. So we're good to go there. So really all we have to do here is kind of completed. So we're going to move on to the switch next. Okay, so I've logged into my uh, switch management and our job here is to actually just to create the VLAN across the switch. So what I want to do is create a VLAN. I want to reserve ports three and four. So I'm going to click on add and I'm going to go to ports three, put an untagged port in and go to port four, put an untagged port in and since my uplink is port 9, I'm going to go over to port 9 and I'm going to tag port 9. And I'm going to give it a 100 value because that has to match. That um, VLAN ID has to match all the way through the, from the access point, through the switch, through your firewall. So it understands. It won't get stopped anywhere. So I've created what I need to create for this. Hit save. And as you can see down here, I've got my VLAN ID 100. Um, I have two untagged ports or dedicated ports, which is three and four. And um, they're upstreaming to port nine. And we'll test that out here uh, when we get done and create the access point. We'll give this whole thing a, a quick test. And that's pretty much all I got to do here. So let's now move over to my Unify AP and let's get that configured with a wireless network so we can get that into the equation.
Okay, so we're now on the Unify controller, and we got to do a couple of things in the Unify controller. The first thing we have to do is create a network. So let's go ahead and create a new network. And it's going to be a VLAN only. We'll give it the same VLAN 100. And we'll give it a name. And I'm going to click Save. So we now have our test network. It is a VLAN only network. And it's VLAN ID is 100. So now let's pop up to wireless networks. Create a new wireless network. And let's give it a, and you can pick different names for these. I'm just trying to keep them consistent. So we're gonna enable with this wireless network. It's gonna have WPA personal. And we're going to select the test network. Go look under advanced. Um, see if there's anything we need to set here. The only thing we need to set is we're going to use actually both. They're all the access points that are available. Um, we're also going to use the both ranges. So we're really not going to make any changes here. So I'm going to leave this alone. And I'm going to hit save. And so we now have our test network we have our test land in in uh, unify and we should be ready to go we should now be ready to test and to make sure that um, everything we plugged in and everything we access via wireless is going to work so i've connected one of my computers to port 3 that we just configured um, as the new vlan and now let's see that it's both accessing the internet and getting the right IP address. So first things first, let's make sure that it's actually working. And it does seem to be, so we have internet access. Now let's take a look at the network properties to see what kind of IP that we got. And as you can see, I have a 100.100, .100, which was the first number I put into my DHCP range, and it's in the right network so everything is being picked up correctly so anything being plugged into ports three and four is getting assigned a 100.x address which is exactly what i wanted and so for the last portion of this test uh, before we test the wireless out i want to make sure that i've got the isolation that i'm looking for i'm going to go ahead and try to ping a, a device on another network and it's not reaching it. So I've got the isolation I'm looking for, and I've got the IP range I'm looking for, I've got the connections I'm looking for. So now the last step is to actually test wireless. So let's go ahead and attach to the wireless network that we created earlier. There's our test network, and we'll disconnect automatically, and we'll click on connect. We'll type in the password. Say no. And there we are, we're connected to our test network. So let's check the properties of our wireless adapter to make sure that it's getting the proper IP registration. So if we look at the uh, details here, we can see that it's picking up a 100.102 address, which is exactly what we wanted. That's validating that everything coming in through that SSID is gonna get the right IP range. So let's verify that it's actually connecting to the internet. So we'll go to Google. It seems to be going to Google. We'll just pick a random site. Just go to Verizon here. And it's taking us where we need to go. So that completes the functional aspect. So we are getting the right IP address and we're getting, um, obviously it's working. So today we've covered creating a simple VLAN using three different manufacturers equipment and made it all work together. Um, you can mix and match equipment as long as it all ind independently supports VLANs. And of course your switch has to be a managed switch. Hopefully this helps you better understand how you can create a VLAN in your home or your small business and provide some isolation and improve security for your network. And that you accomplish this using different manufacturer's equipment. So thank you for watching and I hope you really enjoyed this video. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and select that notifications icon so you'll be notified of new content. And I'll see you on the next video.